The reason why I say that, I have never, ever taken a piece of 25 pound test Andy, put five loops in it, and grab it, and pull it, and break it every time. Put five loops in the suffix, and pull it, you ain't gonna break it. Same way with several more di uh, different types of lines. And uh, Suffolk has beautiful knot strength. And a lot of times I've seen these guys cast up the pier. And they are rear back and fire. And all you hear is, Dow! What in the world's going on? They blame it on the line being wrapped around the wall. I know what it was. So let me see the line. They bring it back and it's got a little curl in it. I said, that's a knot you had in the damn jig. That's where it broke. But what kind of knot would you put there? What? What kind of knot would you tie? I don't know. I don't know what kind of knot he tied, but I've been using the same knot since 1949. Well, tell me what it is so I'll know. Give me something. Give me something. Well, we got some line in that bucket right here. Okay. Some? Well, you... Hello, hello. 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 You take it. You put it through the book, you bring it around, and you wrap it five times. You go right back to the side of the book, pull the head out through the loop, and pull it down tight. You gotta move. Like that and watch it. Like this. <laughs> so you're talking an improved clinch knot. Oh, that? that was an improved clinch knot. That's it. Or a Michelin knot. And now you got 5,280 tight knots. That you if you don't do this one, it ain't gonna work. You know that not one of the World's Fair in 1927. It ought to. I'm glad. Okay, well, we know that we're fishing to the west, and we know that we're using an eight foot rod, so somewhere between eight and nine foot rod, fiberglass or graphite with a 20 to 30 pound spin reel, and 30, 25 to 30 pound line. Yes. Okay, now what, it, it, well, how are we gonna rig these rods? Are we gonna use live bait? Are we gonna use jigs? What are we gonna do? Well, you can uh, have all the live baits you want. I'll use my dingo rings right here. That's right. But what if I see a hundred pounder? I got a hundred pounder hanging on my wall with caught on a dingo ring. How many have you pulled off on one of them dingo rings? How many have you pulled off on one of them lures? None. None? No. I don't pull them off. I don't have my drag sitting down tight to where they break off the thick guys and Oh, they, they, now, that, that brings up a good subject right there, Tim. I always bring up a good subject. These guys that fish off the piers, they are hell bent to hook the fish up and bring him to the pier and gaff him. You don't gaff a 50 pound fish in five minutes. You don't gaff a 50 pound fish in 20 minutes. When you hook the fish up on the pier, back off on the drag, because he's trying to get away. He's trying to get away from you. Back off on the drag, let it walk around the pier, let it go out to the southwest, 100 yards, and when you bring him back, he's ready for the gap, because he'll be laying on his side. For these guys that fish on the, oh. Oh, don't get me started on that. <laughs> you know I said, I don't want to get me started on that pier fishing thing. No, not me either. But I, I, I like the pier. I like it on the pier. I grew up there. I, I, I harassed the hell out of them. They even got me a little whistle. If you can't get out of, if you can't get out of bed, and I want to take you to time out for five minutes. Yeah, kind of calm them down a little bit. They don't run around like they used to. Well, tell me, if I was fishing with these dinglings, I wonder where these things came from. Some guy in China probably invented these, right? Yeah! I said, some guy in China probably invented dinglings, right? Oh! Oh, my God! 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 Hey, hello, Tim, let me tell you something about these dinglings. I want to know over a period of eight years, how many of these did you sell? 
about 2,500 per year. Yes. And somebody copied my lure, and they started to sell them to Tim for a lot cheaper than I could wrap them. But I hand wrapped mine. Thank you. That's and, uh, but well, I didn't say nothing to Tim. Seven kids to come with us. So I was thinking buy a cheaper thing. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you something right now. When I go in there and buy something, I said, where in the hell is my discount? <laughs> right on. <laughs> so tell me about the tell me about the first time how how the ding -a came about. You know, I should have brought one of them. I should have brought one. I got the original 1963 ding -a Mine has lawn chair webbing on it. Yeah, that's got what it was. Has lawn chair webbing that's on it. I still have a I still have a big link that has plastic, long, plastic rope on it. It has plastic lawn chair webbing on it. Yeah. Yeah. There's two I know there's two types of ding lings. No, there's only one type. There's two, two sizes, one type. Right. But I don't know the difference in why I should be using one and why I should use the other. Oh, okay. Where's that? This one here. Yeah, that one there. A boat ding -ling. Yep. What makes a boat ding -ling different than a pier ding -ling? Well, just, head cut off. Well, Why do I want a head cut off like that for? If it, was, if it was the other kind of head, I could throw it further. Well, let me tell you something. You can keep this mirror up on the top a lot easier than you can a three ounce one. This is only an inch and five eighths. And you can work it up top. Make it do the same Bible steps off, and then you can hook it. Okay. So I got my rod, my reel, my line, my jig. How am I going to read that? Tie it on to a leader. What kind of leader? That. This long? That's <laughs> <laughs> like, I think all my are like that. Well, then, uh, you know, if you tell me how long that is, that might be like 24 inches. And if my wife tells me how long that is, that might be 6 inches. 30 inches. And uh, I do not. Listen to me. I do not use Florida carbon. That's better. Get your money. I've been catching carbon since 1949, and I never, ever used floor carbon. Do you I'm going to have to disagree with Frank here. Do you now. think I could caught more fish if I didn't use floor carbon? Absolutely. Oh, my God. <laughs> Do you know why? Because floor carbon is the same density as salt water. It doesn't refract light. Now, the jig part doesn't make a big difference. Tim, I know you're a businessman. <laughs> and you run a tackle shop. But if you think for one minute that that damn car you was looking at that floor of carbon and some of that jig, I'll keep on Broadway you can have to have that now. You really believe that? There's one. There's one hell of a fisherman sitting back there by the name of Chris. He is OPI Tex, OPI. And he picks up my rod on the pier one day. And he says, uh, this drag is not tight enough. I said, is that your rod? <laughs> he said, no. I said, well, then it's tight enough for me. So. Be like a dumbass. I walked over and picked up his. I had to wrap the damn line around my arm to pull the drag off. What in the hell? Why drag like that? I don't know right now. He was fishing on the pier, and when he hooked him up, he wanted to bring him right in there and get him. <laughs> 